Welcome to my channel and the world of hidden secrets. Today I will take you to Lidingö, an island located just a 20 minute car drive from the city of Stockholm. An island which offers a piece of untouched wilderness and also my absolute favorite inn here in Stockholm, a place where I often take foreign guests whenever I get the chance. A unique place with a, a seldom experienced, genuine 18th century atmosphere, which is hidden there out in the forest, to the extent that if you haven't been guided there, you would most probably not be able to find it. And that's probably the reason why so many Stockholmers are totally unaware of this place. And, and, that also gives me a reason to reveal the tremendous power of this little stone, which in a way is connected to Lidingö, um, a stone which enabled the mankind to cross oceans, to even discover the American continent many hundred years before Christopher Columbus and many hundred years before the compass was invented and saw daylight here in Europe. So uh, stay tuned! Hello, my name is Olf and I have the privilege to be Chief Officer and Captain on ships and yachts around the world. My motto is, don't be a tourist. What I'm going to show you are the hidden nooks and corners, the really interesting places for you to visit. And if you like it, please click subscribe. This time I will take you on board the passenger vessel Windhelm, with its home base just below the Royal Castle in Stockholm. When arriving and departing from Stockholm, you are passing the island of Lidingö, an island representing a dramatic contrast to the city life. On this little island you can experience both untouched wilderness and a piece of the Swedish history, including a flavor of the Swedish way of living some 200 years ago. In the middle of the island you will find Long Engels Gård, built on a historic ground which goes back to the Vikings and the Iron Age. I will now show you how to come there with public transport, which will take roughly an hour, but which includes a 20 minute walk through an untouched nature, which is so characteristic for this part of Sweden. The first thing you do is to take the subway from the central station to Hoopslip followed by the light rail to the station Breivik. You will then reach Longängens gård after a one and a half kilometer scenic walk on the trail through the forest. And there it is, Longängens gård, today functioning as a restaurant. And here we have the main building built 1774. During winter time it's only open on Saturdays and Sundays, but with extended opening hours during the summer season. The atmosphere is pretty much original. In its early days it was owned by the baker at the royal court, Carl Joachim Kemmerker. During that time, the Swedish national poet Carl Mikael Bellman was an often seen guest in the house, and many of his songs were written just there. Longängen means the long field, and the history of the location goes back long in time, which can be seen from the Viking burial grounds around the corner. And, oh yes, the stone. Welcome to the high-tech Viking era. Since the beginning of mankind, the sun has been used to find a key to direction when moving from one point to another, especially at sea where you have no other reference points during daylight. But what do you do when it's dark, cloudy or foggy, which is often the case at sea on this latitude? It's here where the optical coincide, or the sunstone, which the Vikings called it, comes in. This crystal splits the light into two beams, which means that you will see everything doubled through the stone because of its polarizing attribute. So, if you for instance paint a dot on the surface of the stone, you will see two dots from the back of it. 
If the stone is directed at an angle towards the sun, one dot will however become stronger than the other. But if you direct the stone straight towards the sun, the two dots will be of equal strength. This effect is still there even if you can't see the sun because of clouds, fog or even when it's slightly dark. Whereby this stone is able to guide you in many ways like a compass. And archaeological finding shows that also the Vikings used this stone in the navigation at sea, something which could explain their exploration of, for instance, Newfoundland and the American continent. <laughs>